Welcome to Trident Astrology. I'm Janine Kane. Today I'm going to be going over the October weekly forecast for the 1st through the 4th. Just as a reminder, I do have um, my forecast in written form down in the description below. I have a PDF link that you can copy and paste um, and put in your web browser or um, I have a link to my blog so that you, if it's your preference, you can read the forecast. So we start off the month with five planets in retrograde. We have Mars, Chiron, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Now this week, we have Pluto going direct on the 4th, and this is a very big deal because Pluto is an outer planet. It symbolizes uh, transformation, regeneration, it's a major social uh, shaker. It's it just it's an immensely powerful and intense energy, and it is going to be going direct this week. Um, in two weeks, we have Mercury going retrograde on the 13th. So by the end of the month, we're going to end up with Mercury, Mars, Chiron, Uranus, and Neptune in retrograde. We have some interplanetary ingression um, or interplanetary. Uh, sign changes happening. The Sun enters Scorpio on the 22nd. Um, Scorpio is ruled by Pluto. So again, we're going to be moving into these very platonic realms this month. Um, so pretty intense energy this month and following us through to the end of the year. Mercury entered Scorpio on the September 27th and it will be entering Libra on October 27th. Venus enters Virgo on October 2nd this week, um, and we'll enter Libra on October 27th. Interestingly, we have both Mercury and Venus entering into Libra on the 27th, and um, I think this is fitting because Libra helps to um, helps us moderate, be, be level-headed, have equilibrium, have temperance during times of intensity and change. So I think that energy shift with Mercury and Venus going into Libra is definitely going to help balance out the intense energy of this month. We have two full uh, full moons happening um, this month. So on October 31st, we have a blue moon. Blue moons occur when two uh, full moons occur in one month. So we have a um, full moon happening on October 1st. And we have a full moon in Aries which Aries is a very intense energy. It's ruled by Mars. So this week is jam-packed with intense energy. We have a full moon in Aries. We have um, Pluto going direct. And then we have um, Venus going into Virgo. I think Venus going into Virgo is going to help us kind of think things through. So that might be some really good balancing energy as well. But we have some intense uh, shifts happening this week. And we also have some intense configurations. We have a T-square between Sun, Moon, Chiron, Jupiter, and Pallas Athena. We have a Sun-Uranus quincunx going exact. We have Eris and Mars conjunction, which is also squaring Pluto. And that energy is, is intensely, intensely uh, immense and um, is not just this month, but it's going to be following us through to the end of the year and even into 2021. So this is very impactful. And then we have the Grand Fire Trine between South Node, Vesta, and Eris and Mars. So Eris and Mars conjunction is a part of this Grand Fire Trine. Then we have Mercury Chi Chiron Quincunx as well. So a lot of uh, challenging and need for adjustment energy happening as well, along with the intensity. So let's get started. So on the first Thursday at 2.05 p.m., Pacific Standard Time, we have the full moon in Aries at 9 degrees and 8 minutes. So um, we see here the moon is in opposition to the sun with Chiron conjunct the moon. Now Chiron conjunct the moon um, is bringing up inner wounds um, that will be coming to the emotional surface. So Chiron is the wounded healer and the moon is our emotions. This full moon consists also of a T-square between the sun and moon in opposition, with Chiron conjunct the moon, squaring Jupiter, which is conjunct Pallas Athena, which is squaring this, which this opposition between the sun and the moon are squaring Jupiter and Pallas Athena, Pallas Athena, excuse me. Um, 
with the moon in opposition to the sun in Libra, we focus our willpower, Aries is willpower, to gain equilibrium. Libra is equilibrium through faith, Jupiter, and spiritual warriorship. Pallas Athena is, um, represents um, the, a, the spiritual warrior goddess. And so as our emotions are bursting forth, um, healing process is happening, and it requires our faith and spiritual warriorship. So that's a main focus of this full moon in, with this T-square tension for growth energy happening here. It's a main focus. Um, with Jupiter and Pallas Athena in Capricorn, the emotional healing is going to take place the emotional healing that's going to be taking place is going to, we're going to be wanting to look really honestly into ourselves with immense authenticity and integrity. We might find ourselves wanting more time alone, and it is going to take an immense amount of patience and strategy to, to work through our, our inner wounds as they come bursting forth um, um, during this full moon. It's going to take an immense amount of courage, Aries, and temperance, Libra, in the process of healing our inner lives. So that's what that energy is about there too. Full moons represent endings and let it go. It's about, um, it's a time of great completion. This full moon in Aries is about releasing emotional wounds. It's also about balancing our need, our, our personal needs, our individual needs with the needs of others. Aries is um, our individual needs, and Libra is the needs of others. It's also about knowing ourselves and our place in the social world and our sense of self in relationship to others. Aries and Libra here is the axis of life. Our sense of self is not, not doesn't develop on its own. It develops through interaction with others, and we also influence others development of self it's an integral process and so this is a um on the axis of libra and aries and so it's really focused on self and other and healing our wounds and maybe even through self and other now we can see here also that four planets are in capricorn capricorn is cardinal earth we also have three planets in Aries, we have Chiron, Eris, and Mars in Aries, and the luminary uh, moon in Aries. So that's also cardinal energy. It's cardinal fire. Now, cardinal cardinality, this modality is about just bursting forth. It's energy, move, forward and moving energy. So we may feel that our emotions are just kind of just bursting forth really intensely. I mean, this is a very cardinally focused full moon. And also what we can see here is that the moon is quincunx Uranus. This quincunx between the sun and Uranus is going to be going exact on Tuesday, or not on Tuesday, excuse me, um, on Friday the 2nd. Um, again, uh, quincunx energy is challenging and it requires adjustment. With the sun quincunx uh, Uranus, we may be required to make adjustments to our sense of self, um, and to our individuality and to our sense of freedom. Um, and this is a time that's going to be requiring a lot of patience out of us and a lot of temperance, especially as we feel that we're going to have to acquiesce our freedom, our sense of individuality. We might have to make some compromises. So this that Libra energy here as it quincunxes, this, this kind of having to adjust and compromise our freedom, we have to be patient. Um, uh, as we're having to do as such. Um, so the challenge is to be temperate, moderate, and patient when we really want to outburst or protest whatever is coming at us. And with Venus entering into Virgo on Friday, the tendency to think things through will help moderate the intense emotions um, influenced by this full moon. All right, moving on to Friday the 2nd. On the same day that uh, the Sun Uranus quincunx goes exact, Venus enters into Virgo. So let's pull that up. Oops. <clears throat> so see here, Venus enters into Virgo on that day. Now Virgo is ruled by Mercury and Chiron. 
many people might not know that, but Chiron also um, rules, Merc um, rules Virgo. Because Virgo is about healing. Um, and, and Chiron's about healing, so they, they go well together, they go together. So it symbolizes surrendering to things. Virgo is about surrendering to things that we cannot control. It's about mastering ourself and it's and mastering our mind because Virgo is ruled by Mercury. It's about our mind. Um, this means um, thinking things through. So Venus um, is about our values. Um, it's the function of how we determine what is good or bad or what we like or we don't like. And with Venus moving into Virgo, there may be a tendency to fill things out methodically and cautiously. And I think this is a very good thing, a um, good shift um, in energy because um, um, it can help us kind of slow down, think about things. Um, I think the shadow side of this is just it's thinking so much that you're not making any decisions. That's kind of a shadow side of, um, of the Virgo energy there. Um, so this will be a good thing as we, uh, Venus moving into uh, Virgo can be a good thing as we have some heavy decisions ahead of us in the world to be made right now. And we have some very intense energy coming up for us collectively. So again, like I said, it's, it's good to have this kind of um, cautious, methodical um, Venus, ener Venus and, uh, and Virgo energy happening. All right, October 3rd, uh, Saturday. This is when we start going, getting into some majorly in, major intensity. So on October 3rd, we have, we have mars Eris conjunction. So Mars right now is retrograde. It's closer to the Earth in creating um, a, a greater intensity of Mars aggressive, intense energy. It's it's it is a conjunct um, Eris, which is the goddess of discord, the goddess of strife, anarchy, and rebellion. Um, it's not all so bad. Sometimes going through discord and strife, it shakes things up and we have to be really authentic and really uh, integral in ourselves. So she really symbolizes the feminine side of uh, the Pluto energy of regeneration. She, she shakes things up and she forces us to really look deep in ourselves in an authentic and integral way in order to get through these fires. Um, Let's see here. Where am I? Um, <clears throat> so with this Mars and Eris uh, con conjunction here, I'm anticipating some intense energy and change in current events, especially with this Mars Eris conjunction squaring Pluto and Saturn, which are have been massive um, social cultural changers um, in society. It's been regenerating and transforming um, and restructuralizing our society. So we have this strong Mars and uh, this, this strong goddess of discord energy squaring off with the Pluto energy here. Um, and, it's, and also we have this grand fire trine involved with the this Pluto squaring the Eris Mars. Um, so what's interesting is that that, the, that when Eris and Mars were conjunct and there was a grand fire trine, the last time that happened was on August 17th. That is when the August, when many of the fires occurred in the West Coast, in particular, the August complex fire started. And I'm not going to go into detail here, but if, if we look at the August complex fire that occurred, Mars and Eris were conjunct forming a grand trine with the sun conjunct Mercury, um, trining um, the south node, trining uh, Mars and Eris. So we had a grand fire trine here between Mercury, sun, south node, and the Mars and Eris conjunction. So again, on the 3rd of October, we again have this Mars-Eris uh, conjunction grand fire trine. I'm not, I don't know what, what, um, what shifts are going to be happening, but I can assure you it's going to be quite intense. <clears throat> um, so 
with with Eris involved, in order to get through the fires, we really need to be completely authentic with oneself and completely integral at this time. So this immense energy with Mars, Eris, squaring Pluto is going to follow us through to the end of the year, into year 2020, and also into uh, 2021. So this is a bridging point, October 3rd is, is a bridging point of intensity for us collectively. So we need to be prepared as much as we can uh, for the upcoming intensity uh, and changes that are going to be happening um, in the following months. It's going to be really intense, so buckle up your seat belts. Okay, finally on uh, Sunday, October 4th, Again, um, another um, massive shift of uh, energy change here. Let me get this pulled up. We have, <clears throat> so whilst we have Mars and Eris squaring Pluto, Pluto goes direct. So it's going to be intensifying this energy of regeneration, rebirth, and transformation in Capricorn, which is about society and structure. So collectively, socially, um, uh, collectively, socially, culturally, we are demanded to be integral. Capricorn is about integrity. Um, anything that is not based in truth is going to be torn down. So as we can see here, also when Pluto goes direct, we also have a yod to Pluto with, a, with Pluto in quincunx to Vesta and to the north node. So... Um, so the future of humanity, which is the North Node, and the collective spiritual development, Vesta, um, depends on how well we handle uh, the current situations with truth and uprightness. That's the Pluto energy here. This is going to require an immense amount of adjustment in the following months. So we also have here um, Mercury uh quincun or no excuse me quin yes quincunx chiron and also opposing uranus so uh with with mercury quincunx chiron and aries going going uh exact on the same go this this quincunx exact on the same day pluto goes direct our minds and perspectives of reality um are challenged to adjust to ancestral wounds of humanity that are trying to be healed. So there is this incoherence um, with the actuality of our collective uh, wounds and how we're perceiving them. So in particular, Western way of thinking that individual, the individual alone is the most important. We live in a dog-eat-dog -dog world. We live where it's me, me, me. It's about me achieving my individual self. And it's just not true. We need to have this massive collective shift. We need each other. We need to support each other collectively. Um, so this perception has created a major collective wound. This individual pers pers perspective on reality has really created this collective wound. Um, and this that's that north node in Gemini. That north node is that collective destiny where we need a perceptual shift. Um, this is going to require an immense amount of collective effort. That's that north node here. Um, we, we need to, looking at the Mercury opposing Uranus here. So Uranus is divine mind. Mercury is our personal mind. We need to be beyond, move beyond our limited personal, our own limited personal perspective of ourself into the divine mind, the collective mind. We need to think side out, outside of ourselves to the whole of humanity. So that is that is kind of a major focus uh, for us collectively right now. So it's going to be a really intense week. Um, we start off with. Uh, the 1st of October with the full moon in Aries that emphasizes temperance and equilibrium over our emotions as we heal inwardly. Um, this is going to require an immense amount of patience and faith. We then have Venus entering Virgo on the 2nd, which shifts 
um, practice of judgment to think cautiously and methodically about events going on in the world. Um, so I really hope, I hope that, um, that we can use that, Vir that Venus and Virgo energy for that rather than um, nitpicking at each other. Because I could be a shadow side of Venus going in, oh, no, no, I'm right. I've analyzed everything. I'm perfect and you're not. You know, I'm hoping that's not the shadow side of that. Um, we end the week also with some very intense energy with um, Mars retrograde conjuncting Eris, the goddess of discord, squaring Pluto and Saturn. That is going to be following us through to the end of the year. So really intense energy. Um, this strengthens the intensity of the social cultural shifts throughout the year. And finally, we uh, have Pluto going direct on the 4th, intensifying the energy of regeneration and transformation of those things lacking in integrity. So um, just put on your seatbelt and do your best to, um, to get through these intense times. Um, meditate, go, go inward, um, and seek moderation, seek balance the best that you can. I know it's going to be a very challenging time. Future highlights for upcoming October weekly uh, forecast. We have Mercury-Uranus opposition going exact on October 7th. Venus quincunx uh, Chiron on the 8th. Mars squaring Pluto is going to be going exact on October 9th. So that, uh, that Mars-Eris-Pluto square is going to get intense as we move forward into the month. And on the 10th, we have Venus trine Uranus. And next week, we also go, go into our quarter moon phase. So um, I really appreciate you uh, joining me for another uh, weekly forecast. And I do hope you join me next week. Buckle up your seatbelt, folks. Uh, it's going to be an intense ride um, from here on out. So blessings and love.